Welcome back, guys. Thanks for tuning in to the latest episode of Terrible Tile Tuesday. I am your host, Sim Football Critic, coming to you again live from my father-in-law's home in Tampa. <laughs> yes, guys, still out of town. And you're more than likely going to have to deal with this for another week, you know, including this show and the next show and then the show after that. So two shows from now, we'll be back home in my element and we'll get back on the regularly scheduled program. But for now, you're going to have to deal with the different background as well as the bad webcam. I'm, I so miss my real camera, the bad lighting, all of the stuff that we're normally used to. We're just not going to get it right now. You may have some background noise, what have you, but it is what it is. That's what happens when you're traveling on your your own location, if you will. Right. But welcome, guys. And again, you're probably seeing this live. If you are, you're seeing the stream. I mean, the uh, the chat continuing to run because I released this as a premiere. So for you guys who are watching this after the fact, if you want to look at the live comments, you can do so by cutting on the live replay or what have you. And you can see what people were saying during the show. But let's get right into it, man, because I don't want this to be too long since it's not live. I just want you guys to be able to get the information and get out. I don't want to hold you too long. So I have a quick list of things. So let's dive into it. And of course, you know, we got training camp coming. We got that coming on Thursday. So, you know, information and content should start to pick up, you know, since training camp is finally approaching. And we know the Steelers will be playing in the uh, preseason game very early, the Hall of Fame game. So, you know, we got a lot of stuff that I think that will be coming our way soon. The first thing we're going to talk about here as I look down at my phone, man, was I wrong? <laughs> about Dwayne Haskins last week. And I won't say I was wrong because I don't know if he could control what has transpired since the last show. But remember on the last show, I was talking about Dwayne Haskins being mature and proposing. And, you know, I'm saying, oh, you know, not saying that you're not mature if you don't propose or what have you. I'm just saying, you know, proposing at his age and it maybe showed another sign of maturity, right? Well, <laughs> Uh, unbeknownst to him, I guess, what a, what a, a sequence of events, you know, him and his fiance, I guess they got into it. She punches him in the mouth. You know, what we're hearing the reports are saying he lost a tooth and other, you know, injuries to his mouth. Crazy, right? I don't know the full details because, again, I don't try to dive into people's business like that. But we do know there was some type of altercation. Apparently his uh, wife now, you know, again, last week we just heard about him proposing. So apparently they got married in Vegas, but we find out that the wife is arrested for some type of assault. And again, we find out that he has to get dental work. And I'm just like, wow, what in the world is going on there? And, and the young lady is only 23 years old. Again, I'm not going to try to dive into their business and I'll leave it at that. But wow, how crazy is that? Right. You know, I guess it doesn't really have anything to do with football. The only thing I will say is, I tell you, man, it seems like the, the Steelers, for whatever reason, just can't stay out of the news cycle from year to year. And, you know, even if it's not anything that serious, it just seems like there's always something weird, right? And I know what some people are going to say, oh, it's under Tomlin's tenure. Man, I'm going to just do that at y'all. <laughs> you can't control these players. You can't control the players. I mean, the people around them, yada, yada, yada etc etc so hopefully Dwayne Haskins and his wife you know they figure out what they need to figure out whether they're going to be together or maybe since it was a Vegas wedding it gets annulled I don't know I pray for the both of them and I just pray for the best of that situation and there you have it now speaking of people and uh being in the news cycle let's pick up the next thing here Devin Bush Devin Bush is still acting a little crazy if you look at his tweets, and again, I don't know what's going on with him. It could just be him, you know, just poking fun on the Internet. I don't know. I don't know these people's intention. I don't know the motive. So, again, I will not try to pretend like I know I'm going to you know, refrain from making all of these crazy speculations and comments about the guy's character. I, I hate when people do that. I'm not going to do that. I do not know Devin Bush personally. So I'm not going to sit here and try to say what's going on with him what's going on in his mind, yada, 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 what he should do. Again, what I would like him to do is not draw so much attention to himself and the team. But can I tell him what to do? I cannot. Do I know why he's doing it? I do not. The only thing that I do know is 
yeah, it would be better if he wasn't, but it is what it is. But let's again, let's keep an eye on it. Remember, two shows ago, I said, is or should the Steelers start being concerned about Devin Bush? Let's keep an eye on it. I did think it was funny, man, if you guys follow him on Twitter, <laughs> how, you know, he said something and then, you know, Big Cam Haywood told him to calm himself down. And then later on, he tweeted, you know, I got my control over Cam. You know, when he's on here, I be quiet. But when he's gone, I'm talking again. <laughs> and for some of you guys that don't know that reference, it comes from the movie Friday uh, when Smokey, a.k.a. Chris Tucker, was referring to Debo. It just I thought that was funny because I just thought that was a cool exchange. And, you know, some people even made a story out of that. And I'm like, y'all don't even know the reference. You don't even get the reference. So stop talking. Stop talking about stuff you don't know nothing about. Hilarious, but whatever, man. Let's get to the next topic. Again, you guys are probably hearing the background stuff going on now, but what are you going to do, right? So next, let's talk about this, man. Um, Benny Snell. I don't understand why Benny Snell seems to be a topic of discussion right now, that people are kind of ready to ship him out of town. You know, and, and I, I saw this, you know, you kind of... You kind of watch the media cycle or you kind of watch fans, you know, as different signings start to happen. And, you know, as people start developing a love for a certain player at a certain position, you start seeing them calculating their minds what should be happening with these other players. For whatever reason, people are now saying that Benny Snell uh, should be, you know, perhaps traded now. You know, shout outs to my good brother, Kenyon. I'm sure he's in here. I'm sure he's going to watch this video. He did send me an interesting take. I forgot who who said it, but it was an interesting take um, seeing that Cam Akers and man, I pray for him, man. Y'all know that's my guy. Y'all know I'm a Florida State guy. You know, God bless him, man. You know, the room, not rumor, but the report is that he tore his Achilles. Very sad indeed, right? But there was an interesting take. And again, I forget who the guy was who said this, but he said, Keep an eye on Benny Snell because Benny Snell has done fairly well on outside zone type of runs, right? And would fit fairly well in the Rams system. So I guess that sparked up more people talking about watch out for Benny Snell. And let's be honest, we know how these things work. When you hear stuff in the news, all it takes is for one guy to say something and everyone else jumps on that train. So maybe that's where all of the Benny Snell talk came from. But I will say that that take very interesting. Very interesting indeed, that individual take. Hey, let's see. You know, listen, y'all know how I am. I love the Steelers. And there are certain players that come through our organization that I love and I like. But at the end of the day, whatever's best for the team is what it's going to be. If they feel like there's value there and you choose to, you know, perhaps move on from Benny Snell in that regard and you can get something for him. I'm not upset with that. I mean, again, we just drafted Najee Harris, <laughs> who's going to be the guy, right? And then a bigger guy in a Kalen Balaj might stick. And then Anthony McFarlane obviously is going to be a piece in this offense, you know, now with Matt Canada running the show. I'm not opposed to any of that. Jalen Samuels is kind of the one that, hmm, you know, I wouldn't hurt my feelings if he was gone. No disrespect. To him, you know, maybe he just hasn't had the opportunity to play that much. And even when he's played, he's did decent at times. You know, we all remember the Patriots game. But again, as I'm ready to ship him out of town, who knows how he might be able to evolve in a Matt Canada style offense with different formations. And Matt Canada saying that, you know, taking advantage of matchups are going to definitely be a thing, which, you know, everybody says that. But you know what I'm saying? Maybe he's a, a better matchup against a defender you know putting him in the right spot he's you know he can pass catch and i don't know so i, I don't want to just dismiss Jalen samuels it just kind of seems that way with the traditional steelers backfield that we've seen the last few years you would think he could possibly be the odd man out but hey a lot of times when players get hurt and things happen and you're trying to add more depth to the roster you never know so maybe Benny Snell could be a trade guy. I, we'll see. We'll see. But, you know, I just wanted to throw that out there. It's just it's funny how stories get legs, man, and, and people just start running with it. That's very interesting to me, man. So, again, moving right along, let's get to the next two topics here. And I think we'll be done. 
Um, next thing I got here. The Steelers signed Chaz Green, offensive tackle. Don't know much about him. He did play for the Indianapolis Colts. I didn't even realize that he was the guy <laughs> that TJ Watt was mat, you know, matched up against quite often. There's actually a clip out there that Steelers Depot posted where uh, he's holding TJ Watt. And, you know, I can't judge his skill set or what he is based off of that. Again, I told you guys, it's very rare that I watch offense alignment on other teams. Some guys I'm familiar with because I may have seen them play for certain teams or maybe I knew them in college. But I, I'm not the guy that's going to sit here and tell you if that was a good or bad signing. I will tell you this, though. I'm cool with it. We all know offensive line is still, you know, question mark. <laughs> Still a question mark as far as who's going to be the starters, particularly in the tackles, you know, position, right? You know, we, we know there's a lot of shuffling going on, of course, with David DeCastro, uh, you know, being released and we signed Trey Turner and you would expect Dotson to still be on the left side and Trey Turner more than likely on the right side. And, you know, you're hoping to see that. What's that guy? Uh, uh, Kendrick Green. Maybe he wins out and, and becomes a rookie starter at center. But we still don't know exactly what we got to tackle. We have no idea what we had to tackle. <laughs> so to seeing that the Steelers are, are still trying to bolster the depth there, I'm not upset at all. Whatever y'all think y'all got to do, I'm going to trust in the process. So we'll see. It's just good to see them continue to add in spots that even us as the fans would recognize as areas of concern. So we'll see what, you know, what this guy turns out to be, whether he's a, you know, rotational piece, a solid backup that's going to dress on Sundays, or if he ends up starting, I don't know. But I am not upset with that move. We all said they needed to continue to search for depth and talent at offensive line, and they're doing it. So, all right, let's do it. Let's do it. Now, before I go into the main piece of information in the main topic, I'm going to throw one more thing out there since camp will be ramping up here on Thursday. So by the time I do another video come next Tuesday, we may have some stuff to talk about. I want to ask you guys, man, and definitely put it in the chat. And even if you don't watch this live, man, put it in the chat so, you know, I, you guys can comment and I can take a look and comment back. What are some of your, you know, your your top camp battles that you're interested in seeing now what positions are you interested in seeing the most you know you guys probably already know mine i'm very interested to see what's going to happen at the nickel corner spot that would be my top uh battle position as of right now you know whether it's going to be a shakur brown whether it's going to be antoine brooks that we've heard that right whether it's going to be a trade Norwood or uh, what's going to happen with guys like Mark Gilbert, you know, are they going to stick on the roster and be able to play outside? And, you know, is a guy going to emerge on the outside like a Gilbert or Pierre? He takes his game to another level and then we kick sudden inside. I mean, it's a lot of questions unanswered. So I will just say from top to bottom, for the most part, that third and beyond corner. You know, who is that guy going to be and who will end up being the dime backer? Like it's oof. I am very interested in seeing how this cornerback position is going to shake out when you start talking about nickel and beyond. Right. So I can't wait to see and hear about those battles. That would probably be my number one right now is that position. But what are some other positions that you guys, you know, might want to see as far as you know, where the depth chart would be ordered or if there's guys you think might emerge and become a starter in a certain position. I definitely want to hear that from you guys and, and we'll keep watching it. We'll watch it and see how camp works out. And again, man, I'm so glad that we're playing in the Hall of Fame game because we get to see guys in action early this year, early first week of August. So that should be great. So don't really have to look down at my phone here. I'll put the phone away. Final and main topic of the night. The Pittsburgh Steelers signed Melvin Ingram to a one-year deal. And also, you know, Chaz Green one year as well. But let's talk about this Melvin Ingram signing. A lot of positives here, right? But what's interesting is the Steelers have gone outside of the norm. It's funny, right? Because we always talk about what the Steelers are 
generally going to do or what the Steelers normally do in the Steeler way and how they do business. And I'm telling you, if we go back about three years, maybe four, but at least three years ago, you started seeing different trends of things that the Steelers don't normally do, whether it's going up to get Devin Bush, which we did it before, but it was years ago. And then the trading, the first rounder for Minka and the signing of Steven Nelson paying that kind of money for, you know, at that time, a guy that would be like one of the top names in free agency. And by the way, he hinted today as well that there should be some news on him either today or tomorrow. Be interesting if he messed around and circled back. But yeah, man, it's to see those guys sign Melvin Ingram. It tells me so many things. Right. It's not just that they're going to add depth to the outside linebacker position, which we all think is a great idea. You know, I'm wondering if now if a guy like Marsh, Cassius Marsh, you know, number 49, as Kenyon calls him, <laughs> if he's going to be cut from the roster, you know, who knows? I don't know what type of depth they want to keep there. Is a guy like Roche going to, you know, show some flash in camp that's another guy not necessarily a battle but i guess you could call it a battle i guess you could call that another position battle in terms of the fourth outside linebacker right they're gonna keep more than three but you already know tj watt high smith ingram who is gonna be that solidified fourth guy so maybe that's another position to look out for and we'll see if anybody gets cut we already know uh speaking of cuts uh, Jerron Jones, who's an offensive lineman, and unfortunately, uh, Bundage. I know some of you guys were big on Calvin Bundage. He has been cut, and that, that, that sucks, man. I really I really feel for a guy like that. You know, you, you get signed to a team. You don't even get to camp to show what you can do. But, you know, the Steelers are going to try to build the best roster they can. So, you know, what are you going to do about that? But, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm liking the depth right now. To some degree, I mean, listen, he might be an older guy, but he's still Melvin Ingram. And, you know, if he can stay healthy, that's always going to be the question. And, and when you start looking at free agents and older guys, you know, I know some people are a little sour on, oh, well, this guy was injured and now he has history. But I mean, how many guys don't at this stage, at that stage of their career? So it, it's taking a chance. It's a crapshoot. Like, you know, a lot of players, you know, you never know who's going to get injured. You, you're taking a chance as somebody that's proven, that has talent, and you, you got to go with that and see what they're going to do, right? But it's interesting as well because the Steelers don't normally sign defensive players plus 30. And it's a $4 million deal. You know, I don't know how it's structured, but clearly the Steelers are trying to do something different. You know what this tells me? Maybe it's my crazy mind, but what this tells me, they all in the best that they can be. But it sounds like they're all in for this year, meaning that they know they got to do all they can to try to help their franchise quarterback get to the Super Bowl and or win it in his final season. Because that is a very surprising move that they're making with a Melvin Ingram. Again, we definitely needed depth. We needed help, but they normally don't sign guys like that. They normally don't do that. So again, that tells me that they're all in. They're going to try to get it as good as they can on defense to try to help out Ben Roethlisberger in that offense and to give him one last crack at it. Because to me, all signs are pointing towards him definitely retiring after this season. So we shall see. But yeah, man, that's the mega news of the day. Melvin, Melvin Ingram, for you guys that don't know, you know, former pass rusher, former elite pass rusher, for the San Diego Chargers, well, excuse me, Los Angeles Chargers now, I believe, right? Has now signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers on a one-year deal. He will be partnered with TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith. Now, that is the question, too. Is Ingram coming in to be the starter? Hmm. Let's keep an eye on that depth chart. Is Ingram going to be, <coughs> excuse me, the rotational piece? Or are they going with more veteran leadership or veteran wisdom? You know, a guy who's been there, done that. Are you going more so with that guy to compliment TJ Watt and you bring in High Smith as a rotational piece? So a lot of questions to be unanswered, man. 
or excuse me, a lot of questions to be answered, not unanswered, but a lot of unanswered questions is what I was thinking. Right. So we shall see. But either way, man, I'm super excited to be able to talk some Pittsburgh still to talk, man, and training camp about this is my time right here, boy. <laughs> because from now on, there will be stuff to talk about. There will be players to talk about. There will be surprise cuts to talk about more than likely. Might even be another surprise signing to talk about. So let's gear up and get ready for it. And like I said, guys, uh, this show and the next one more than likely will be recorded. But then come August, uh, you know, the first show in, in August will be back to normal and we'll be back to our normal, regularly scheduled program phone calls will return and things of that nature but all right guys that is going to do it for this particular episode of course i gotta remind you guys if you like the video make sure you like the video if you like the content make sure you subscribe to the channel and also if you're subscribed cut on your notifications you might as well know when videos are available but outside of that y'all know the routine man if you care to donate that information is in the description and if you donated here on youtube while the show was live i thank you in advance outside of that i hope you guys stay well stay blessed good night and thank you for tuning in to terrible Tile tuesday peace